Good morning. I will be reading Luke 10, 38 through 41. Okay, 42, excuse me. Um, and it's on page 1613 in your, in your pew Bible. So, here we go. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Is there a certain place that is very special to you? May not be all that special to anyone else, but because of certain memories that might have happened at that place or certain things that, that have occurred, your heart often longs to be at that place, your special place. Perhaps it's a house where you grew up or where you raised your family. Uh, to anyone else, it may just be a building, but to you, it's a warehouse of memories. Perhaps your special place is a church or a field or a lake or a campground or a small town somewhere or maybe even some place in the middle of a big city. While that place may be shared by many other people, you still consider it your place. I think everybody needs a place like that. Jesus said that while the foxes had holes and the birds had nests, that the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. Jesus had no home of his own during his ministry. But he did have a special place where he could go. And he went often where he could just get away from the crowds, where he could sleep, where he could enjoy good food and company. And that place was Bethany. I would like to expound this morning and next week as well on how that, as Jesus was busy about the work of establishing the church, the activity that went on at this special place called Bethany would be the very activity that Christ intended for the church. So let's take a look at the things which happened at Bethany and see what a special place this was. First of all, we see that Bethany was a place of fellowship and a friendship. Our passage for today indicates a special friendship between Jesus and the inhabitants of this house in, in, house in Bethany, where Jesus would often stay. As verse 38 says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village, which was Bethany, where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus were a family, but they're more than just followers of Jesus. They were his personal friends, and they were people with whom Jesus could make a temporary home. There are a number of in indications of this, ranging from the story that Jessica just read for us to the fact that at the death of Lazarus, Jesus was moved to the point of, of tears of sorrow. And some might say, well, I don't know about this. If, if Jesus is supposed to love everybody the same, then how could he allow himself to be better friends with some people than with others? So how did Mary and Martha and Lazarus get to be so much closer to him than other people did? And the same has been asked about his inner circle of disciples, which were Peter, James, and John. You know, it sounds like Jesus plays favorites. That doesn't sound like that, that, that's right. How could that be? But we so often forget to acknowledge the humanity of Jesus Christ. While he was Almighty God in the flesh, he was also a human being whose personality and whose background and whose likes and dislikes would naturally make him connect more with some people than, than with others. Of course, there would be some people with whom he would feel more at ease than others. That doesn't detract from his love for all people, not at all. At Bethany, Jesus found some special friends. It was a place of friendship and fellowship for him. The church also needs to be a place of friendship. Think about that. In the church, you share the most significant common bond that you could ever share with another person, which is your faith in Jesus Christ. It's a lot easier to be friends with someone when you share things in common. I know I seem to hit it off faster with people when I can talk to them about sports or, or music or other personal interests that we share. But when you come to church and you can know 
that the other people are there because they believe in Jesus and because they love him. And you're there because you believe and you love him. There is an instant connection. There is an interdependence there that just cannot be ignored, even though some might try. That bond is always there, as we see in the illustrations that the Bible gives to us regarding the church that we talked about just a few weeks ago, such as the church is the body, the church is a building, the church is like a family. You can amputate an arm or a leg from your body. You can tear down a part of a building. You can disown a family member. But there will always be reminders of that original complete unit. You can split up a church. You can leave a church. You can change churches. But there will always be reminders of that bond of unity that was once there. That's because the church is based on friendships in the Lord. Now, that is not to say that there cannot be special friendships within the church. You know, many people criticize the church for this. You've probably heard that. Oh, our church just has too many cliques. I don't like church because of that. Smaller groups of friends within the larger church who spend maybe more time with each other than they do with other people. I've never known a church that did not have such groups. And I think that it is totally unrealistic to expect this not to happen. Inner circles are going to naturally form. Now, people will tend to socialize with those that they have more in common with or those that they just get along with better. Now, you're going to like some people better than you like others. But the problem comes when the church is all together and people never break out of those small inner groups and we forget that we are one body and there's not one group here and one group there. That happens in churches sometimes. And then when that happens, the church is no longer a place of friendship, but it's a place of competition and of, of rivalry and jealousy. There is a place and a time for that inner circle of special friendships within the church, but there's also a place and a time to expand the circle and to include everyone. Jesus understood the difference, and I pray that you and I will always do that too. I'm so glad to see many of you making deliberate efforts to span those gaps and... Uh, just erase the, the differences between some of the smaller groups that there could be. I see that as the truest sign of spiritual and, and numerical growth. And I encourage each of you to do that, you know, to make the effort to sit with somebody different once in a while or to, uh, to, to speak to somebody that you don't ordinarily speak to in the normal course of your morning here at church or to seek out people that you don't know. You look around and see somebody you don't know, that's a good thing, but don't keep it that way. Make sure that you find out who it is that you don't know and welcome them to our one circle of friendship. The church needs to be a place of fellowship and friendship, just as Bethany was for Jesus. To Jesus, Bethany was also a place of rest. Bethany was a village on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives, just about two miles from Jerusalem. Several times when Jesus was in the Jerusalem area, we are told that he went out of the city to spend the night in Bethany. And some scholars disagree about this, but they uh, must say that the, this was not because there just wasn't room enough in Jerusalem, but that Jesus deliberately went out of town to a place where he could get away and just get some rest. Sometimes he took his disciples with him, sometimes he went alone. It's rather safe to assume that when it says in the Bible that he went to Bethany, that it was to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Again, remembering his humanity, Jesus needed a retreat. He needed a place where he could rest. He was a human being. He got tired. He needed to sleep. He needed to rest and to relax and just to let down his guard. Now, when I say that, there was never a more genuine person than Jesus Christ. But still, we must remember that in the high-pressured life that he lived, of dealing with multitudes of needy people, of facing trick questions from the, the Pharisees, always trying to trip him up, and all the physical demands of an itinerant ministry, Jesus needed a place to be able to just kick back and to put his guard down and just crash. Yes, Jesus, the creator of the universe, needed a place for physical and emotional rest. Well, the church also needs to be a place of rest. Now, this doesn't mean I'm giving you permission to fall asleep during the sermon. So, if you have, wake up. But I do want you to consider the church as a place where you can just kick back a little bit. I know there are some people in a lot of churches that are just so busy with the work of the church that Sunday doesn't seem like a day of rest. It's a day of hard work. But no matter how busy that you might be, when you come to church, it can still be a place to get away from the workday world 
and to simply acknowledge your Creator and to be strengthened by the knowledge of His presence and the fellowship of His people. It's important to come to church to find that rest. But even more than that, the church should be a place of emotional rest rather than to be a place where you have to put up your guard and, and pretend to be somebody that you're not. The church should be the place where you can just relax and be yourself. Now, it's exhausting to have to put on some phony face and to have people not know certain things about your life. It's draining to come to church and to always have your guard up and being careful of every word you say and walking on eggshells of strained relationships. There's a lot of churches that are like that. And such churches, and sometimes every church goes through a season like that, but when that happens, it is more emotionally exhausting for you to come to church than to, to stay away. And I hope that it's not the way it is for you here at Spinning Road. I want this to be a place where you can just be who you are. I confess to sometimes thinking I have to fit the image of what everyone thinks a pastor and his family should be. I remember especially when the kids were younger, and you know, believe me, families with young children, we understand how hard it is to get those kids up and ready and in time for Sunday school and all cleaned up and everything. It's tough stuff. And I remember a number of days when uh, the kids weren't cooperating and we were not on time and we were growling at each other. Then we pulled into the church parking lot and put on our pasted smiles, <laughs> pretending we're the perfectly organized family when we just weren't. It didn't take too long for most churches to figure out that we were not. <laughs> and we've always felt the freedom just to be ourselves with you. And I hope that you feel the same freedom. Now, I'm not saying that we just give each other the license to sin, say, okay, you do what you want to do, I'm going to do what I want to do, and we just won't talk about it. I'm not saying that at all. We need to confess our sins. We need to hold each other accountable for our sins. But let's just be who we are. And instead of pretending to be something that we're not, let's together try to be more like Jesus. Even Jesus needed a place to rest, and he found that at Bethany. We also see that Bethany was a place of service. In the familiar story that Jessica read for us today, we see that service to Christ means different things to different people. Jesus had come to Mary and Martha's house, and they both wanted to serve him, for they both understood that he was the Messiah, and he was worthy of the best of their time and their attention and their effort. Martha probably the older sister, because she is described as the owner of the house, got very busy. She was probably in another room, uh, scurrying around, preparing the best meal that she knew how to make, you know, setting an attractive table, making sure that the place was as clean as it possibly could be. And then she noticed that while she was doing all of this hard, important work, that her kid sister, Mary, wasn't doing anything except sitting and talking with Jesus. The nerve of some people. It's not that she didn't understand Mary's desire to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to his teachings. I'm sure Martha wanted to do that too. But in her mind, what she was doing was more important. It took priority. It had to come first. I mean, maybe after supper was over, they'd have time to do things like sit around and chat. But uh, that might only be after they washed the dishes and everything was put away and the house was straightened up again. See, there's always something that needs to be done, isn't there? So Martha came to Jesus and asked Jesus to help straighten Mary out. Now, couldn't Jesus see that she was working so hard and Mary wasn't doing anything? He should teach Mary about what is most important. But instead, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, cool your jets, or something like that. <laughs> Actually, he said, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things, in verse 41. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What Mary is doing is better than what you're doing. That is the kind of service I really want. It wasn't that Jesus did not appreciate what Martha was doing. It was good of her to, have, to want to have Jesus have a nice meal and to be comfortable and to have everything in order and looking nice for him. And it wasn't that her service was not legitimate service. It certainly was. Jesus was certainly worthy to be recipient of all that Martha was doing, all that hard work and care and devotion. It seems like somebody should be doing those things for Jesus, doesn't it? It's just that that's not the kind of service that Jesus expected or wanted. What he wanted was the kind of service that Mary was giving him, to be in so enthralled with the words and the teachings and just the presence of the Lord that nothing else was as important as just simply soaking it all in. Maybe there would be time to do these other things later, which Martha wanted to do and she wanted Mary to do. 
And that would have been fine in a truly humble act of service, which Mary should help with. But it was just more important to do what Mary was doing rather than doing what Martha was doing. Both were trying to find their place of service there in Bethany, and Jesus told them where that place was. Well, the church is also a place of service. But people have different ideas of what that service should be. There are a lot of Marthas in churches today. I'm not talking about you, Martha. I'm talking about anybody. <laughs> there are a lot of men Marthas, too. Both men and women alike, people who really want to serve the Lord, but just have some kind of twisted ideas about what's most important. There are a lot of tasks involved in church work that require preparation and active involvement and, and behind the scenes scurrying around and possibly even time away doing things in the church that we'd rather be doing. But people are willing to make those sacrifices since those things are important and they do need to be done. And people like that are glad to serve the Lord and they strive to be dedicated enough not to leave such things undone or to make someone else have to do that. And I'm so grateful for those kind of people. But still sometimes, a little bit of that Martha attitude can come out. Where we think, well, I hope God appreciates all I'm doing. Or I wish he'd straighten out those other people at church who just sit and do nothing while I'm so busy with all this important work and, and I'm, I'm serving on the board and I'm on three different committees and all they do is fellowship and pray and study the Bible. Now, it's not that all this active work is not important or that it isn't legitimate service to God. It certainly is, and it needs to be done. Somebody has to do it. But it's still true that for some people, it's easier to get all involved in the busy work than to just sit at the feet of Jesus and learn. And so what can happen, doesn't always have to happen, you can do both, but what can happen is that the busy work can become a replacement for your relationship with Christ, which is all that God really wants for many of us. If you would take the time to sit at his feet and learn and to pray with one another and to fellowship and to study together, then you will be inspired to get up and to work and to be active. You will want to serve on those boards and committees because there's work to be done and that's how we often do it. Or there's other ways to do the Lord's work and his service in busy, active ways. And if you don't learn that, then you haven't really learned anything from Jesus' feet. But for those who immerse themselves in the busy work without taking time for the more important things, and there are more important things, Jesus just says, Martha, Martha, or you can insert your name in there. You're worried and you're upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. The church is a place of service in many different ways, but the truest, purest service that you can give is just to simply sit at the feet of Jesus and learn and then God will show you the specific work that he wants you to be doing. And you will never have to let your busy work be a replacement for your true, pure service to God. So I invite you to come to Bethany. Find that special place in your life, in the place that Christ established for you, his church. Designed to be a place of fellowship and friendship. A place of rest, emotional as well as physical. And a place of service. Next week, we're going to be looking at some different aspects of the church in view of some of the other events that occurred at Bethany, this very special place.